Hello. Hello. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megs. Hey, Meg. Happy 30th birthday. Well, happy birthday, Megan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Meg. First was my first memory of you. And of course, that's when you were the day you were born. November 26, 1985 in Cincinnati, Ohio. You were a big baby. You were over eight pounds. So that, that of course, made me a big mom because I was carrying around an eight-pound baby. We, of course, immediately fell in love with you and have watched over the years as you, be as you have become a wonderful, beautiful young woman. My first memory of Megan was uh, back in elementary school. And she wouldn't allow me and someone else, I forget who, to eat our dessert before our meal. And we were very surprised at what a rule follower she was. We were in Vogue, and I just remember seeing her from across the room, and she had short hair at the time, which she had twisted up into two pigtails off the side of her head, and was bouncing around the room doing her shuga 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 move even from across the common room, and I didn't know her that well. I was kind of like, hmm, she's someone I want to know. Could, could spend more time with that girl. My first memory of Megan is being set up with her on a blind lady date. So I met her at this Hawaiian restaurant on the 20th Street Mall, and I walked up to her and I was like, are you Megan? She's like, yeah. She's like, are you rude? I was like, uh-huh. And then we proceeded to go see Valentine's Day, I believe, at the movie theater on our blind date and it went smashingly and the rest is history. My first memory of Megan was when we first met which was about three years ago at the kitchen next door and it was kind of this awkward blind date scenario that Brie set up for us. I remember when I first met her being frustrated with Brie thinking this girl is way too good looking and way too cool for me and what the hell are you doing getting me out here on this date? First memory was basically playing in the backyard of our house in Indian Hill and so Megan would make these like potions to heal me and TJ. So she would make these potions out of pretty much anything she could find in the backyard. It was like flowers and twigs and dirt and all sorts of great things you would just make into this little concoction and either like make us eat it for some reason or just like rub it on our arms and legs as to like heal like nightmares or sores that we had. Megan was like a little mini shaman at the age of like seven years old. I was riding my bike to Montessori training, the first day of Montessori training and pull up to the stoplight, I'm feeling a little nervous and all of a sudden this cute girl Bikes up right next to me. We kind of look at each other and smile, and she's on her little hipster bike. And what do you know? We're both going to the same place. The thing that uh, I recall the best is having our date nights where you and I would go out to nice dinners at nice places. You'd get a nice dress on, I'd wear a tie. It was a time to get you away from the boys. My favorite memories of Megan is when she and I were roommates in uh, McCracken Hall and she was sleeping um, when I was up studying one night and she did this very flirtatious little giggle um, in the middle of her dreams. I have no idea what her dream was about. She didn't remember when she woke up the next morning. I don't remember my first memory of Megan, but... It's probably right around the same time as when I first realized we were going to be friends, which was likely in a group violin performance where we were all dressed the same, listening to orders being barked at us by our crazy teacher. I've known Megan since high school, and so I probably realized we were going to be friends over a bottle of hot dam in the slattery basement and, you know, chasing that back with something delicious like orange soda. The first memories that I have of Megan is... Uh, the white trash theme party that she threw. I also think that this was the first time I knew that Megan and I were going to be friends because I also love theme parties and her enthusiasm that she put in to planning that party and also planning a stellar white trash outfit um, was very encouraging to me. 
I realized Megan and I were going to be friends when we were in chemistry class together and we were in the first row and we were definitely the only ones who didn't ever get anything about chemistry. A lovely teacher who I forgot who she was, but she would always <laughs> lean over and say, girls, did you get that last point? And uh, yeah, I knew Megan and I were gonna be friends after that. Megan's room was right across from the room I shared with Amanda. Um, and Megan was nice enough to rescue me from um, Amanda's many conversations about cats. I knew soon after that conversation, our first conversation, that we were going to be fast friends. And I find it super amusing that now Megan herself is a little bit of a cat lady. The reenactment of Megan's laugh. I'm going to now reenact Megan's snort. I, I just, when she does it, it's so in the moment. It always starts with a giggle. Kind of like, like that. She kind of shrugs a little bit, like. <laughs> you have to be like laughing really hard. I'm pretty sure Megan's spirit animal is a baby kangaroo. The reason I think that is because she's always hopping around and kicking and acting all bouncy. Megan's spirit animal would be a very special creature. I imagine something with the wings of a swan and the mane of a lion and a unicorn's horn and it would have special powers that it could always make you giggle and make you forget all of your problems and it would make you laugh so hard that your face literally hurts from laughing. Or failing that, Megan's spirit animal is obviously Leslie Nope. But I'm just going to go with the first animal that really jumped out at me and seemed like a good fit, which is a billy goat. Yeah, she just... Reminds me of a billy goat. I haven't really thought about it, but it, it seems like it really fits. Well, not really an animal. I would say it's uh, Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Just because when I picture Megan, all I can think of is kind of the, the Carlton dance. And I feel like that's that's what she is. She's, she's straight up Carlton. Or maybe just the dance of Carlton. It's animal medicine cards. And I drew for Megan... the turkey and it is very fitting for Megan because um, it says here you have transcended self you act and react on the behalf of others you aspire to help those who need help this is not out of some sense of self-righteous moralism or religious guilt help and sustenance are given by turkey out of the realization that all life is sacred it is knowing that the great spirit resides within all people it is an acknowledgement that what you do for others, you do for yourself. And I love that I drew that for Meg because she truly is the most giving and um, gosh, beautiful person that I know. What has surprised me most over the years about you, Megan, has been your ability to fit into any social situation with ease and to make others feel welcome. To be, so, to be so loyal to your friends and family, to explore the spirit world in order to uh, better understand yourself and to know what you want and have the determination to make it happen. I don't think I could even imagine our world without all the laughter, kindness, and sincere thoughtfulness that Megan brings into our world every single day. She's just the most genuine, nicest, coolest, sweetest, badass person I've ever met, so. She always makes my day sunny. And even now that I've known her all my life, I'm surprised. Her effervescent and constant bubbliness, almost to the point where it's a bit annoying. Like, why are you all, how can you just be so happy all the time? She has her ups and downs, but to have that constantly percolating energy of happiness, it's contagious. It's always fun to be around. I am so glad to have been such a good friend of yours and to continue to be a friend of yours. 
You are one of the cheeriest and kindest people I've ever met. I'm really glad that I had somebody so early in life and now later in life um, who I can always count on to relate to just being a little weird. Um, it's great. And she was like, we're going to tell your ride. And she pretty much dragged me um, from my like depress depression to Telluride Bluegrass Festival. It's the first time I've gone and it was one of the best weekends of my life. And I still remember it. I think about it all the time. Makes me really glad she's in my life. <laughs> My least favorite thing that Megan does and I would have to say that that would be her cheery cheery songs in the morning not all the time but mostly when you know people are hung over she comes into the room bouncing around singing the cheery cheery song and you know it's it's you know a little rough to hear when you have a really bad headache but let's be honest after a while um, you can't help but smile because it's a really happy song but one thing that Megan does that drives me that is my least, my least favorite thing about Megan is that she lives on the other side of the world from me. I guess if I had to choose a least favorite part of Megan, it would be her hangriness is truly next level. For as teeny tiny as she is, she truly needs to eat very frequently, more frequently than most people I know. It's pretty rare that Megan is not chippy and sheer cheery to the 100th degree but when when she isn't fed on time that definitely seems to happen i still love her very much but she gets real hangry my favorite megan costume favorite Meg megan costume it's hard to say exactly what Megan's <clears throat> most awesome costume was. My favorite Megan costume. This was a really hard one. Oh, we've had so many fun ones together. And here I'm going to have to go with the classic uh, wig and mustache look. Meg invented the wig mustache combo, and it's probably been her greatest contribution to society. I think our friendship really flourished the night you were running around town in a thong onesie and I was stumbling close behind dressed as Snooky. When it was closing day veil a couple years ago, Megan had an all-American uh, onesie suit on. It was a full head-to-toe onesie, American flag, like a leotard, with like hair that was big and blonde also very long. I think it was a replica of Phil Long's hairdo. The blonde spiky mullet wig that she puts on. She's like a beautiful and magical and strange version of David Bowie. And she got up on the picnic tables and she was voted best costume. And then she led everybody in God Bless America, I think. My favorite is when you were um, wrapped up like a, a present and we, we made a big box for you and you had your arms sticking out the side and we put a big bow around the center of the box and I think on your head too. Wow. And you had a little, little difficulty walking in that one but <laughs> you persevered and, and uh, went and did your trick-or-treating in that box. My favorite Megan costume I believe comes from uh, her pirate bride costume for Annie's bachelorette pontoon boat ride. She showed up and she was wearing purple see-through tights, sans underwear, and a leotard and a black curly-haired wig, dressed up as an 80s workout girl. And <laughs> the the sewing the sewing didn't like go down the middle of her butt crack, so it kept getting pushed off to the side. So all night long you could see Meg's buns through these see-through purple tights. Definitely Captain America, and that is because that was the best Captain America butt I have ever seen. She she taps it. She takes it. But your 90s costume, you know, you just had so many subtle little details in your costume with the hot pink cat shirt, um, your scrunchy socks. My favorite Megan costume is two years ago she did Evil Knievel, and she had all the parts, of course, out of her huge costume bag. Um, and, and including a little BMX bike that we borrowed from a friend, and it just looked awesome. Plus, she had 
such a good attitude about it that it really made the whole thing come together. I really enjoyed the box troll costume, mostly because I had no fucking idea what that was supposed to be. As a side note, my least favorite Megan costume was last year. She was a box troll and it was just too good. She looked like a troll and it was really unsettling. You know, I've never seen it, and I really just hope I don't ever see it because I want to always be on her good side because she's a spicy one. I have been a recipient of the Angry Megan nose so many times that I can't I can't remember a specific reason or certain one particular event why what I did to deserve it. Oh yeah, she gives me the Angry Megan nose all the time, uh, probably at least once a week. I'll do an explanation of it first. It's a it's a violent exhalation through the nostrils, generally accompanied by flashing angry eyes and often a mini fist shake and a tossing of her head. I love the Angry Megan nose. It requires a certain agility of the nostrils. Kind of looks like this. But she gets down low and then like... She exhales so strongly that in fact her nostrils turn white. She actually like forces the blood out of her tiny little nostrils here. And then she goes through her throat and it's game over. Meg, we love you so, so much. Happy birthday. I wish I could be there in person to celebrate with you. But just know that I'm wishing you all the very best from Jackson, Wyoming. Happy birthday. Love you. I wish you all of the best um, as you celebrate your 30th birthday. Megan, I love you so much. Um, happy 30th birthday. I know life just gets better from here on out and um, the 30s are going to be your best years yet. I love you. I hope you have a perfect day. You deserve it. And I can't wait to celebrate in a couple of weeks. I just want to wish you again happy birthday, Megan. We love you so much and we uh, and look forward to seeing what the next few years will bring for you and your life. Happy birthday, Megs. I love you. Hey, Megan, I love you. Love you. Mwah. Happy birthday! Hey,